All right, welcome back to the Rip City Roundtable Podcast. I am your host, Corey Dickman, the shoot first point guard here on the podcast. We're so glad you're joining us and checking us out. We have some things to talk about. Over the past week, since the last time we chatted, the Blazers have logged in three summer league performances. And again, for us Blazers fans, this might as well be the playoffs. I mean, this is just as exciting, just as locked in. I'm checking scores. I'm making sure we're home on time to make sure we check. We're there for the tip-off of the first game. You got behind me here the Washington game, which was the last one the Blazers just played, to move to 2-1 and one into Summer League. I know records don't matter in Summer League, but, you know, the better you do, you get the chance to go to the playoffs in Summer League. You get some extra games in, which is always nice. And although they don't matter for the long-term, you know, records and all that kind of stuff, to these guys playing out here, majority of them will never see an NBA court. This is what they have to live for. And so wins and losses do matter to them. And just to see good basketball, which is a little rough sometimes in summer league, but you want to see people competitively trying to play the best they can and to have a shot at the NBA. So it's exciting to see teams win. You still want it. You still want the W. In the last two games, it was actually super exciting towards the end, the Philadelphia game and then this past one against the Wizards. Both came down to the end, both in different ways. The Blazers making a slight, uh, call it small comeback, against Philadelphia to hang on to a two-point win. And then against Washington, when they and the Blazers had the lead, and Washington climbed back, the Blazers made a very, very poor turnover at the end of the game. Luckily, did not cost them uh, the game, which was nice. So they moved to 2-1. and one. Even the Spurs game, which was a very uh, very lopsided, uh, we'll call it that, to, to, say, to say the least, throughout most of the game, uh, the Blazers did claw back and at least make it competitive towards the end with ha- and had chances to get close to win that game. So 2-1 and one's the record, but records aside, we're all watching to see Mr. Klingon, Mr. S- number 7 pick in the 2024 NBA draft, the guy that could have been number 1, maybe could have been 2, slid all the way to 7, and the Blazers grab him. We knew, we knew Donovan was going to be a good defensive player. But what we've seen so far in Summer League should get Blazers fans excited. And it should get us excited because, well, for a few things. One, I think we got a we got a gem of a defensive player here. And two, I think this means Rob, Robert Williams, I think we can trade him sooner rather than later and give these minutes behind Aiton in the regular season, give him to Klingon because he is going to be a defensive guy right off the bat. You're seeing him in Summer League here. He's leading Summer League in rebounds. He's leading Summer League in blocks, which, again, is Summer League. But there were there were guys drafted ahead of him. Alex Saar, a center, right, uh, the second pick in the draft. He went up against him head-on in this Washington game, which we'll touch on here in a second. But Klingon's outplaying these guys from a defensive perspective. Now, I think as Blazers fans – and media we all knew Klingon was going to come in and do this but it is nice to actually see it happen there is a number though that I want to hang my hat on that's on my head right now is the number 2.7 and you're thinking 2.7 what's 2.7 that's how many fouls he's averaging right now in summer league which is crazy Because Summer League, they give you a lot of fouls, okay? You get much more than six fouls before you foul out of a Summer League game because they want to see you hustling. They don't want to um, uh, hamper development in Summer League because of fouls. So naturally, you just collect more, right? There are some guys averaging seven fouls a Summer League game right now. Klingon averaging 2.7 is massive because if he can stay in the game on the defensive end of the court, that is going to do wonders because always what gets a big man in trouble. And I think in, in college basketball, this happens, especially in the tournament and why teams that have, you know, centers, it, it gets a little shaky because they get two fouls and they're done. And in college basketball, that happens a lot and you lose one game, you're out of the tournament. But Klingon obviously won back-to-back titles there. So he knows how to manage his fouls well. And it's showing in summer league because if he was going to be a foul guy, he would be fouling right now. And so that is, to me, stands out more so than anything else. 
His rebounding's great. The block shots and the shots that he alters, they always say this all the time about shot blockers, right? It's not the amount of blocks you get. It's the shots that altered that are mattered, and those aren't those aren't recorded in the stat sheets, right? He's altering a lot of shots, and the guy can move. He's good on his feet, but he can control that paint on the, on the back end, on the defensive side. So I don't know. I think right now, and I'm going to overreact here. I mean, the Blazers got a guy right here. This is a Rudy Gobert. This is this is Rudy. He got drafted 27th in the terrible, terrible uh, 2013 draft, right? The same one that Giannis came out of. The draft that a lot of people have compared the 2024 draft to, right? They compare it to 2023 or 2013. Sorry, Anthony Bennett, Victor Oladipo. But you go down that list, and you know Rudy Gobert at 27, Giannis at 13. Like you get guys, you know CJ at 13 or at 10. You there were players in that draft. So Klingon, I think, has that potential. I would say Donovan Klingon is ahead of where Rudy Gobert was at that same age, in same stage. Now, Gobert's coming from France back then, right? Whole different scene. Klingon's coming from college basketball. But as far as a defensive guy goes, this is it. And I don't want the offensive side. I know you're going to say, well, what about the offense, Corey? And I would say, well, let's cut to break and not talk about it. But uh, the offense, is, it's coming along. It, it, uh, you know, he, he made his first three. Donovan Klingon made his first three in the Wizards game. So he's like, I think one for nine now, some, somewhere in there, 16%. Um, he doesn't need to be a light, lights out three point shooter. But if he can pull defenses out and at least somewhat come to him and close out, that's what we want. But his ability to play make is really what's going to be strong, what's going to pull defenses to him. Because you give a 7 2, a 7 3 guy full vision to make passes, that guy's going to hit cutters to the lane all day long or find one pass hockey assist to the corner for a three. So Klingon's ability to pass probably will do the trick, but if he can get up to a 33, 34, 35% three-point shooter, knock down one or two a game, that will change his offensive trajectory here. Um, His skill set around the rim needs a little work. I think he rushes a lot of things here in summer league. So, you know, but those things are going to come. What I like about Donovan is he doesn't need the ball. You don't run sets for Klingon, which is perfect because in this season, you know, you have Aiton that's going to score down low. If Jeremy Grant's still on the team, he's, he's, you know, a forward that'll be scoring the ball. And then, of course, you got the three guards and Scoot, Simons, and Sharp that'll have the ball a lot. So Klingon... He can go out there. He doesn't need the ball. I was reminded of that scene in Eddie with Whoopi Goldberg where they had that big center, and, and he's like, score ball. And, and Whoopi finally is like, no, no, like defense, <laughs> rebound. That's all you got to tell Donovan to do, at least in season one here. And if he can get proficient around the rim and, and, and just please, Lord, like knock down free throws, be better than 50%, which is where he's at right now, one for two. But be a good uh, a free throw shooter. That is what we want to see out of Donovan, at least in this first year. He'll pair really well uh, with with Aiton. Before we talk about what the season's going to go with, you know, this Wizards game that we got on behind me right here, 77-70, this is, uh, this is going to be one that they're going to talk about for a while because Alex Saar, the number two pick in the 2024 draft, played in this game for the Wizards, and you know how many field goals he hit? A zero. 0 for 15 was Alex Saar, which is like wild. That's wild in any game, let alone a summer league game. And I'm not saying it was all clinging, right? Alex Saar was like 0 for 7 from the three-point arc too. So it wasn't all down low uh, shots that were deflected or or redirected or blocked. But clinging made a difference. And I'm sorry, if, if, if Saar had gone up against any other guy tonight, he's not 0 for 15. He's scoring points. He's a number two pick in the draft. Now, Sar's not a big a point. He's he, he's not a walking bucket, okay? So he didn't average 20 points in the Australian League. He averaged like nine. So I'm not saying Alex Sar lights the world on fire anyway. But to go 0 for, 0 for 15, that's clinging. And I, you think you take a guy, you want that fire in a dude. Like, you, you know Donovan took this game to heart and wanted to show out against Alex Sar. So I love that about Donovan. We're seeing great stuff here. As Blazers fans, again, Summer League, we tune in because we usually have high draft picks, at least of late, playing in Summer League. And so it's good things we're seeing right now. So anyway, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back. We'll wrap up the show here on the Rip City Roundtable podcast. Don't go anywhere. All 
right, we're back. We have to run the ads. We got to pay for the show. We got to we got to we got to figure it out somehow, right? So here we go. Second segment. We got the Philly game behind us. I talked about this game two, uh, a very different game from game uh, three against the Wizards. And so it, th- this this is the game where it showed me. And if you didn't notice, I added my jacket. You know our. Uh, our, our main guy, Mike, threw it to me here and then reminded me that we did lose against the Spurs. And uh, I, I brought it up. I, I said we lost to the Spurs. Castle's a great player. He he played well. He's friends with Donovan. I'm sure they had a thing going. It's Vegas. Maybe they had a side bet between the two of them. And and Castle, he, he played really well. When you have Popovich, you had CP3, you had Harrison Barnes on the sideline. I mean, that's unfair, right? You have your coach on the sideline probably – telling people stuff you know who knows who knows what Popovich does so but we did lose that game we'll see the Spurs in the summer league finals so uh but the the, but the Philly game was fascinating but not in a good way because the Blazers have basically three guys that were on the roster last year that are in summer league right Justin Minaya two-way guy you know how I feel about Justin he is a playoff guy you could he could have played for the Celtics in the finals I I, I'm telling you I know he's a two-way dude and I know he's very predictable, but the guy plays, and he could give you seven or eight really good minutes in a high-end playoff game. But that's another conversation. So Manaya's playing. Uh, Ryan Rupert, who I think has shown the most here in Summer League as the ability to say, I can come in and, and, and actually play this season for the Blazers and potentially have something here. But Chris Murray's the guy that we need to chat about because Chris had the opportunity to come into Summer League and be that 20-point scorer. Be the guy to knock down every open three. Take charge of the team. He's not a playmaker, so he's not going to have the control like a point guard would. But it's summer league, and he has NBA experience. His brother is extremely good for the Kings. Chris has the ability to take over a game, and he's just not doing it. And I guess this, in this Philly game, I think it showed his flaws. And I think Chris is overthinking his three-point shot. He's playing a lot like he did in the beginning of the season for the Blazers last year, where I think he took every minute he played, he was just, he was overthinking it because he wanted to get on the court. He wanted to prove that he's an NBA player. He wanted to probably prove he can live up to the reputation his brother has set. And he looked, and he played really tight. And and it really wasn't until the last quarter. Uh, of the season for the Blazers where, you know, obviously the season was over, but the season was over game one, two. So that's not really an argument. Chris played a lot better as the season went on and, and he just doesn't have that luxury in summer league. <laughs> you have like six games and you got to show and, and especially being the man, knowing he's going to get 15, 16, 17 shots a game. We got to connect on these dude. Like you're going up against not high level defenders right now. These are guys that will play in the G League. They're going to play overseas. They just don't have the physical, uh, the athleticism that a lot of defenders do in the NBA. So Chris, man, you got to show up, dude. And 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 this game was it. Sh- the Philly game showed us he's just not having a good summer league. It didn't improve against Washington, but the Philly game should have been Chris's breakout, in my opinion, because game one of summer league, you're figuring it out. You know the Spurs. They played in this California Classic. Now that that part of it we don't talk about, right? The Spurs had like three games of practice of of, of gameplay before they played the Blazers. The Blazers come in cold, and so Chris had a bad game. We'll give him that. Comes into Game Two though against Philadelphia. That's not really bringing out a very good summer league team, uh, and did not show up. And so that's my worry. I I, I think Chris at, at his peak is a as a high end role player. He plays good defense. He's got to be able to be a 40 percenter from from the three point arc. Like if Chris if Chris Murray is going to stay in the NBA and and be a guy that teams seek out, especially playoff contending teams, he's got to get that percentage up. So I'm not looking for him to run the show and be able to shoot 17 times a game, but in summer league he's going to get those shots and at least get your percentages up. And so that that part has been a little disappointing. Uh, we'll see. We have you know more summer league games to go. Chris is obviously still going to be a focal point of what the Blazers are doing, but you're starting to see players like Bryce McGowan starting to take more shots here. Uh, you're in, and obviously Ryan Rupert is going to get his too in summer league, but Chris has got to improve. And I, I have high hopes for Chris Murray is going to get playing time this season as well, because the Blazers will start to move people. Jeremy Grant will be traded at some point, And the forward core for the Blazers is like Tumani Kamara, 
Advia, uh, who, who, who else? Jabari, right? Uh, Ryan Rupert will be in there, and Murray. Like, so you look at all those guys, and it's like, come on, someone can step up, and Murray just is at the same levels, right? I mean, Tum- Tumani had a great year. I think he's going to make a leap. But everybody else, man, and Jabari kind of plays a different style of game. Murray, you, you got to take these opportunities, man. And I know you feel the pressure right now, and that's probably part of the reason why why things haven't been panning out here. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be looking to Chris. I think I think I know what Ryan Rupert is, and I'm excited for what he can become. Klingon, I know what he is, and I'm really excited for what he can become. Uh, Manaya, Bryce, you have these two-way guys. Uh, Jackie has been fun to watch, too. Uh, but Murray is going to be the dude that has to show up for the rest of summer league, or I just don't know what ends up happening because he could be a classic in the Blazers Blazers fans. We know this type of player, right? We've seen this type of player, right? Your Allen crabs of the world where it's like players come in, will Barton, you know, uh, that may be a different example than crab, but it's like players that we know maybe have some skill set, but just don't ever pan out for the Blazers and then move on. And I think Murray can show up. He's just got to prove it to us in summer league to build that confidence. It's all in his head right now. He has the skill. He has the talent. Let's see what he can do. So Blazers fans, three games in, summer league, feel good. Two and one, clinging, playing well, staying out of foul trouble. I like it. So let's just see where the rest of this goes. This is our playoffs right now because when we get into 20, the 2025 season, 2024, 2024, 2025, it's going to be capture the flag time, right? Am I right? Wink, wink. So let's get some summer league. Let's win the title. Let's win the summer league title. Cling an MVP. And then let's be okay tanking for another year. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the episode. Sorry you were stuck with me. I got some great guests lined up for the next couple of weeks. You're going to like it. People that have been down at summer league right now, getting a much closer glimpse uh, of, of the action than, than I have been. Uh, I'll be covering the game Friday. So when this episode comes out, the Friday night game against the Hornets, I'm, I'm writing the recap. So check out BlazersEdge.com after that. See if you agree with the things that I notice. Uh, no Scoot, no Brandon Miller in this game, but the Hornets always have a good summer league team because they're always terrible. So it'll be a fun game. Check it out Friday night. Read the article on Blazers Edge. And as always, like, follow, subscribe, the podcast, the YouTube channel, Uh, all the things Rip City. So thank you for joining us. And again, and as always, it was a great day to be a Blazer.